Lately, I've been spending a lot of time playing a game called Minecraft. You might have heard of it. You know, the one with the blocks, and the blocks. And after spending countless hours building questionable structures and committing virtual war crimes, I've made the realization that Minecraft may in fact be one of the greatest games of our time. It's a game of infinite possibilities where your creations are limited only by your imagination and the capabilities of your computer. Sure, it may not have the best graphics or the most realistic physics, but I think that that's actually what makes Minecraft so special. The simple graphics, combined with a slightly inaccurate physics, removes players from the restrictions of the material world, allowing them to create pretty much whatever they want. And I won't be having any of that. You see, when I make a game, I don't want the players to be creative or have fun. No, I want a game that makes people suffer and feel pain. Which is why today I'm going to be ruining countless childhoods by completely and utterly destroying everything that makes Minecraft good and adding realistic physics to Minecraft. We've got realistic falling blocks, next generation ragdoll technology, and the wobbliest, most nauseating gameplay the world has ever seen. Let's get to it. So in order to add physics to Minecraft, you first need a Minecraft, obviously. Now I could have tried to make a Minecraft mod or something that adds physics to the actual game, but writing an entire physics engine sounds like a lot of effort and mass, and I'm not a huge fan of either of those, so I opted for the next best thing. Instead of adding physics to Minecraft, I'm actually going to add Minecraft to physics by recreating the entire game using the Unity game engine, which has a very nice built-in physics engine. That, that seems logical, right? Let's get started. So as you probably know, Minecraft has infinite procedurally generated worlds made up of blocks or voxels. And it's in these worlds that all the Minecrafting takes place, so that was what I decided to try to replicate first. I started off small with a little 1x1 unit dirt block, which is just a cube with a dirt texture scribbled on. Then I made a simple script that spawned a bunch of these blocks in a grid, just like in Minecraft. However, unlike Minecraft, these blocks aren't too exciting and lack a certain depth to them. So I threw in a bit of Perlin noise, which is a type of randomness that can be used to generate maps sort of like this, to offset the cubes, and now we have some wavy hills. Cool, that's it right? We have our terrain, now all we have to do is add more cubes and make the world a bit bigger and... Oh right. Apparently, having this many cubes in the world at once isn't great for performance. Luckily, there is a pretty simple solution. Instead of making tons of cube objects, we can instead create a single object that is shaped like multiple cubes, which should be pretty efficient. And since the world is made up of cubes, this should be pretty easy as all we have to do is manually create squares depending on where the blocks are, update the colliders, you know, for collision, and let Unity handle the rest. And so, after a few trips to Stack Overflow and a couple of voxel generation tutorials, I managed to get this set up. Pretty cool, our world is looking as stylish as ever and my computer is no longer screaming in pain. But it's still a little small and Minecraft worlds are infinite, which is a bit of a problem. But this too has a simple solution. You see, the world in Minecraft seems infinite because of something called chunks. Basically, each chunk is, well, a chunk of blocks. In Minecraft, there are these big boxes, 16x16 16 16 blocks wide and 256 blocks high, that contain all the blocks inside this area. In Minecraft, it saves these chunks and loads in the closest chunks to the player, and if the player moves to another chunk, it unloads old ones and loads new ones, which allows the world to be very, very big, since there are always only a set number of chunks active at any given time. So I implemented that by basically just storing our chunks in a dictionary, which is a fancy data structure that lets me map each chunk to a coordinate, and loading, unloading, or generating new chunks every time the player moves to a different chunk using this dictionary. And yeah, loading and unloading already existing chunks around the player works flawlessly and the performance is pretty good, since we're just getting the chunks from the dictionary and setting whether or not they're active. However, generating these chunks for the first time can be pretty slow, since the game has to do quite a bit of processing to generate the terrain and meshes and stuff. And due to how Unity scripts all run on the same thread, which basically means that they run in order one after another, all of the other code has to wait for the chunks to be generated before they can be run. In other words, the chunk generation lags. A lot. So I decided to make the terrain generation multi-threaded, which allows multiple bits of code to run at once. And so, after many hours of frustration and a couple more trips to Stack Overflow, I managed to get it working. Now, the terrain generates in the background separately from everything else, which means that the game doesn't lag anymore, which is pretty cool. I then threw in a very basic player controller to move around in the game, and we now have a functioning Minecraft world. The terrain generation system works pretty much the same as in actual Minecraft, and chunks will load and unload around the player, which allows for pretty much infinite worlds, at least as long as your computer doesn't run out of memory, the noise library I'm using doesn't start screwing up with huge numbers like what happened with the Minecraft Far Lands, and Unity decides to behave. However, unlike the terrain gen in Minecraft, everything is, well, made of dirt. 
so let's spice it up a little. I wasn't all that happy with the boring old hill, so I layered on a bit more perlinoids to spice up the surface, and added some 3D perlinoids underground to get these cave sinks. I also turned lower blocks into stone, put some bedrock on the bottom, turned any exposed dirt blocks to grass, added a couple ore blocks and some ore generation, and made trees randomly appear. And now it's starting to look a bit like Minecraft. Keyword being look because it sure as hell doesn't play like Minecraft. So let's add the player into the game. Now in high intensity action packed games such as Minecraft, good responsive controls are very important. Without them, games can be really difficult to play which can cause a lot of frustration. Which is exactly why I decided to make the player the wobbliest ragdoll man you could possibly make. Well technically he's not a ragdoll or a man. He's actually just an invisible capsule thing because in actual Minecraft, when you're in first person mode you can't see your body. So that's why you can't see your body in this game either. Definitely not because I was too lazy to make a body or anything. But anyways, our bean here is essentially just a rigid body with some scripts. I've set it up so that pressing the WASD keys applies force to move it like a standard first person controller, except with one key difference being that the force is actually applied at a point slightly above the center of mass, so moving around will cause it to tilt. Then I apply torque or force to the rotation to try to balance it. And it's great, whenever you do a touch anything it starts wobbling uncontrollably and causes uncomfortable levels of motion sickness. And finally I added a healthy amount of post-processing and motion blur to really rub in the motion sickness. And that's pretty cool, we basically have really really bad Minecraft now. Except, well, you can't mine. Or craft. So I think it's time we added destruction. Now in Minecraft, if you want to break a block, you just have to point at it and click. Which is far too convenient and easier for my tastes, even with a player as wobbly as this one. I want the players to really struggle and to suffer and to just have a bad time all around. Which is why I took a hint from famously frustrating games like Getting Over It and made the player's hand a ragdoll. And in order to mine, you have to physically hit the block with your limp noodle hand. It's just great. I basically created this nightmare of game design by first modeling and rigging a hand in Blender. No, not that Blender, the 3D modeling tool. Although judging by the quality of this model, I might as well just use an actual Blender. But anyways, I then took this model over to Unity and gave it the gift of life. I also gave the arm just the slightest bit of strength, so that it isn't a complete wet noodle and at least has a bit of resemblance to an arm. Then I slept on a pickaxe and now you can break things by left clicking, which swings the arm and activates the script that handles collisions to break blocks. I then threw in a bit of Unity particle system to make it look nice and made the block drop a smaller version of itself for the player to pick up and yeah, I am ready to mine. But wait, there's still something missing, you hear that? It sounds like inaccurate physics. And we can't have any of that, so let's do some physicsing. So basically our problem is that when you separate blocks from the ground by breaking other blocks, things float, which last time I checked isn't very realistic. So let's make them fall. We're gonna have to do a bit of scripting for this one. Basically our problem of objects floating happens whenever you separate a cluster of blocks from the ground by breaking the block holding them together. So all we have to do is run a check where whenever we break a block we do a flood fill, which is a way to loop through the block starting from the block we destroyed outwards, to find any separated objects and check if anything is floating. And we'll stop searching after a certain amount of blocks have been searched, which should save a bit of processing power and also prevent the entire world from falling. This does mean that really big structures won't fall, but I highly doubt anyone would actually be able to create a structure of that size with these janky controls, so it should be fine. Then, if we find any floating segments, we'll just separate those blocks from the chunk, slap on a couple box colliders for accurate collisions, and add a rigid body to make it fall. Now at first glance, you might think that this approach is pretty bad, since we're looping through tons of blocks every time we break one, and you aren't wrong. However, it actually doesn't run that badly, due to how we aren't actually searching that many blocks, and the code is pretty optimized and is essentially just looping through an array of integers, which is pretty fast. Then I applied this to the blocks that have already fallen using some additional bits of mass and now you can break them into even smaller pieces, which is pretty cool. So now we can break blocks. The next logical move is to add placing blocks, so let's do that. Now placing blocks in the actually good version of Minecraft functions pretty much the same as breaking them. You point and then right click. However, I once again wanted more physics, so instead of making blocks magically appear, the hand will throw a mini version of the block, which will place a block on whatever it hits. It also bounces off the physics enabled blocks because I was too lazy to make them build onto them. But I think it looks better like this anyways and you can do some pretty cool trick shots so it's here to stay. The way I made this was very similar to how I implemented breaking blocks except this time the arm throws the block. And it works great, placing blocks is now not only realistic but also nearly impossible to do well which I'm sure will be great in a game about building things. However that reminds me, 
Minecraft isn't just about building, it can also be about adventure and discovery. And that isn't all that fun to do alone, so let's make some friends. I started off with a zombie first, because while I haven't met one in person, I'm sure they're friendly, right? Anyways, I modeled and rigged it in Blender, slapped on some textures I downloaded off the Minecraft skin website, and then stuffed it into the Unity Ragdoll Generator, and now he's floppy. Maybe a bit too floppy. I don't want him to act like he's dead all the time, I want him to be, well, undead. So I added some code to balance him and to make him walk. It basically works by first applying forces to balance it just like with the player. And to get it to walk, I use some inverse kinematics, which is a way to tell foot to go to point by bending leg. Basically, it keeps the foot firmly planted on the ground. Then if the foot gets too far from the body, it just steps towards the body where it sticks to the ground again. And yeah, he's alive, that's just great. But now it's time for the next step, teaching him to feel pain. So I made a sword in Blender, reused the code for breaking blocks, and now I can do very bad things. I then added copious amounts of blood and made the zombie completely ragdoll on death, and yeah, pain and suffering. But now that our zombie guy can feel pain, I think it's only fair if the player can too. So I made the zombie flail its arms at the player and added a health bar and deaths. That's just great, real good stuff. However, while the player is now able to feel a pretty good amount of pain, I still felt that it wasn't enough. And that's because while zombies do quite a bit of damage, they don't naturally spawn in the world yet and I've just been manually placing them in, so there are no zombies to actually do damage in the actual game. So I made a spawning system and began learning about shaders so I could throw together a little day-night cycle, since zombies only spawn at night. But this ended up being kind of useless because I decided to make zombies spawn during the day also because I wanted more pain. But hey, we have pretty sunsets now. And things are looking pretty good. We have what is basically a fully functional game. But I still felt that there was something missing. I mean, we have a sword and a pickaxe and some blocks, but that's pretty much it. So I added a gun. Yep, gun. In Minecraft. Why? No idea. Basically how it works is that it's a gun. You can shoot things, it breaks blocks, it breaks enemies, it's the jack of all trades. Well, it's really more of a master of all trades because it's very overpowered. So to balance this out, I decided to set up an inventory and a crafting system. Well, sort of. The inventory is really just a counter for the 7 items in the game that you can actually obtain, and the crafting is just a menu with a button because I am lazy. Also, there's only one recipe you can craft, which is the gun, because I actually decided to make the player start off with a diamond pickaxe and sword, because the pickaxe is the only thing besides the gun that can actually break blocks, so you kind of need it, and the sword matches the pickaxe, so yeah. And finally, I went and added a main menu where you can change all sorts of settings, and added some sound effects. And now it's really starting to look like Minecraft. You can mine for ore, craft things, build things, explore, commit war crimes, it's perfect. In fact, I'm pretty sure this game has almost everything Minecraft does, save for a few minor things like a few blocks, a couple mobs, and water. But I'm sure no one will notice. And yeah, this was making Minecraft but with physics or something. I'm not really sure, I just made this video because I wanted to mess around with ragdolls. But hey, the end result turned out pretty good, so if you want to torture yourself, you can try playing it through the link for the download below. It's completely free and it's pretty cool. But yeah, that's all. If you want to see more dumb videos like this, and there will be many more very dumb videos, then consider leaving a like and subscribing and turning on notifications and all that good stuff. Okay, that's enough begging for now, I'm gonna go. See ya!